Hey, welcome back you guys. So, have I been sleeping on dwindle boards? Right here I got a TJ Rogers blind board. In a previous video you saw that I was riding an almost board that I almost really liked. Sorry. Um, but yeah, this one today is different than the last one because the last one was 14 inch wheelbase, super mellow tail. This one is a steep kick, uh, mellow concave, and boy is it steep. So. Uh, we're going to do some skating on this here today. I might either praise or complain it during the video. And then at the end, I'll probably do a little mini board review. Um, but yeah, let's just get some skate clips first and see how it feels. All right, first thing I notice is like the steep tail makes it really hard to kind of navigate. So on the mellow one, I could super easily kick turn and like get on and off the coping. And this one I have to put a lot of force on and have my foot uncomfortably far back on the tail. There's not much fingers of flat here. There's like two, which is, you know, not much, almost like one and a half, not much for a tail. do it if you try, it's just harder. Kind of rode down on that one, let's clean it up. That was better. The last one my front wheels rolled down, which nothing to do with the board, I just hate when that happens. Uh, one thing, and this isn't unique to the board, but when I switched from Indy Standard, one standard 8.5 down to an eight inch venture low, all of a sudden I started nailing all of my Smith grinds on transition and I haven't like been able to figure out exactly why that is. Maybe it's because they're narrower, I'm closer to the board, but like my front wheels used to get dragged down on that trick all the time. And as soon as I switched to venture lows, I'm hitting them pretty much every time. So it was like weird how just sometimes some random thing will change it so much. It actually has a kind of flat concave across the nose, which makes it really stable for slides. I kind of like that. I actually had an easier time balancing on my crook on this than I did on the Clyde Singleton board I had, which I think had a steeper nose. I think the sort of flatness, of the concave is helping me just sit on things. When I was riding the 8.5 Indies, I had a way easier time standing up on that crook as well. So there's a benefit. Too slow. <laughs> Woo. Sir, I don't like it.
All right, so first impressions, you guys. Tail's way too steep. Not enough fingers are flat on the tail. Like the concave is just too compressed for the wheelbase, especially with the ventures. This would be, probably be like really good with some uh, titanium Indies or something like that, or some Mindy hollows, because of just how steep it is. The nose though is actually pretty good. Like, I think I just need a short adjustment time on the nose and I'll start getting really good pop on it. The wood is a bit too stiff. Like there's sort of a Goldilocks zone when your board has a bit of flex, brand new, too stiff. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely struggling just on like straight kick flips and heel flips. It might not show when I do a couple here. But it's just so steep. Whoa, that was a good example. I couldn't lift it up because it just takes too long for that tail to connect. I'm just skating the bowl for the rest of the day because like, this thing's making me unnecessarily tired, so I'm skating the only thing that I can really enjoy here, which is just transition. <laughs> nice. If I had a male tail, I would have landed that. Oh, that was the best one around the corner I've done so far today. That was good. Should I try one more time for that around the corner? Sure. I mean, kind of. Kind of. It was a 5-0 until it, the end. It counts. On that last tail side there, I had my foot like, felt like right here. <laughs> I could barely even stand up on it. Well, I couldn't. Anyways, I'm done. Uh, we'll like go over this board in a bit when I'm not here. Well, you guys, I don't really have much more to say about this than I already said during that session. Yeah, the tail feels too steep for me. Again, probably awesome on a pair of Indie Hollows or Titaniums. The nose actually felt really good. I liked it. Um, I kind of like the concave. It's quite flat. It takes a long time to go up. There's maybe a tiny bit of rocker in the board, not a lot. One thing I would say though is like somehow the concaves just look and feel a little AutoCAD, a little inorganic somehow, compared to some of the other concaves on the market, you know, from some of the other companies. Also, the hardness and stiffness of the wood, I think due to the fact that they're epoxy, again makes them feel a little uh what's the word i want to use almost petrified like petrified wood from a tree it's like really hard but it feels somehow kind of dry and again a little bit lifeless however from everything i've read in the comments these decks tend to keep their stiffness for a really long time so while it feels a little lifeless when it's new to me I do think that when this board gets really old, compared to say a board that's got a little more flex that's made with regular glue that's gonna sog out over time, in about four or five weeks, this one will feel a lot more vital than one of those uh, regular glue decks. So that's one thing to be said about the epoxy and how it feels. It's going to feel better later down the road. It'll be a better investment. And the other thing about dwindle boards is you're going to get the same deck every time. So a regular board is pressed in stacks of four and each one feels not much, but very slightly different. It gets mellower as it goes down the stack. The same way going around a racetrack, the outside part of a racetrack is the widest part 
and the inside of the racetrack is going to be the tightest part. Skateboards are the same way when they're getting pressed. Other than that, I actually like the shape. It's got a really nice shape, slightly bluntish nose. I wouldn't say blunt, but like a nice popsicle with a very little bit of taper, a more tapered tail. Uh, that's kind of my preferred shape. So, you know, I had high hopes for this, but it just didn't work well with the trucks I was riding it with. And I wasn't invested enough to try to keep skating this board. It was just, I just wanted to see how they felt and wonder if I was sleeping on Dwindle. And it's unfortunate to see what's happening with the company, the way it's all kind of dissolving. And you know, there's talk that who knows, maybe it'll become a Walmart brand. It's hard to say. I really hope they do pull through and do salvage some of the brands and maybe even revitalize them, but it doesn't look like it's going that way currently. And you guys, everything I'm saying is based off of hearsay, not off of actual information I have. So I want to be clear about that. Um, there's a lot of people that love dwindle boards. You can see it in the comments. I'm sure tons of you guys have left that. Anyways, that's all I have to say about it. I would try another one. I'm not in a rush to. Anyways, that's it. That's my take on dwindle boards. Hope you guys are doing well and uh, till the next video.